Welcome to Peak into Boutique, everybody. I'm Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics, and I'm super excited to introduce this block of the month project we have for you. We've partnered with AccuQuilt, as well as our fantastic 2020 Michael Miller Fabrics brand ambassadors. We're all gonna be sharing a bunch of fantastic ways to do this quilt, whether it's our free printed downloads, or our AccuQuilt instructions, or today I'm gonna to walk you through it just using some solid fabrics. It's gonna be a blast. We're gonna have fun with this all year long. I'm super excited to kick it off with all of you. Let's get started. Welcome back inside the fun zone, everybody. Didn't that batik quilt look just fabulous outside? Super cool, right? And you may still be thinking to yourself, wait a second, we didn't even realize Michael Miller featured batiks in their collections. Well, we have a few and they are awesome and they're mostly large scale. So I'm gonna show you real quick some of the ones that you're seeing out there in that fantastic quilt and just to entice you a little bit more. Of course, I also will point out that Michael Miller has a few of these beautiful metallic pieces also, which I just absolutely love on top of the batik. Makes for an extra fun, super cool texture. We've got some work to do today, so I'm not gonna spend much time in the show and tell. So let me just get these right out of the way, because as I was saying outside, what I really wanna do is I wanna feature my favorite basics, my hash dot and my jet black, and show you how to put these together a little easier construction style. Sorry, these are kind of in the way, that way. At any rate, we are gonna dive right in and you may need to take a second and get yourself ahead of me here for a moment. In the description below, we have a link to the free PDF pattern here. You're gonna need the instructions for block one because that's all we have available, but it is block of the month. So if you're watching this later down the road, uh, it's February uh, 2020 right now, but if you're watching this way down the road, there'll be other blocks available. And as a reminder, the brand ambassadors for Michael Miller Fabrics are going to be showing you how to do all of the rest of the blocks, having a ton of fun playing with their AccuCut quilt AccuQuilt cutting systems and all of the fantastic stuff out there. We're gonna do it with rotary cutters today. We're gonna to do a basic style and super fun. So you're gonna need these instructions from the description below. So grab that, hey, hit the subscribe button while you're there, make life easy on all of us. And I am going to walk you, like I said, through the basic construction of the center of the block. And we'll also put around the outside edges. But as you can see in the quilt here, it forms a star like that. And all of the centers are unique, but the rest of the finishing, the outside star shape and all of that is gonna go ahead and be the same for all of the blocks in all of the months coming down the pipeline. So with that said, I wanna let you know I am using my fantastic jet black, my beautiful marble fabric here, and then I've got three colors of hash dot, a yellow, a green, and a blue, so that they follow along in the instructions printed. Although it's kind of funny, I have some prototype instructions. Who knows what colors you're really looking at at this point. I've done some pre-cutting and pre-math for us to get life started and easy. And so for both the inside of the block and the outside of the block, you're gonna need some cuts here. So of the black fabric, I have an eight and a half inch strip by the width of the fabric. Then we also have uh, the um, marble, which I'm using for that outside ring on the outer border, and also another strip of black. Those are gonna be cut at four and a half. And then we have a three and three eighths strip, a three inch strip, and a two and a half inch strip. But don't worry about writing any of that down because it's all in your instructions down below. I just want to run through that really quick. And again, the supplies, we'll talk a lot about the additional finishing on the exterior print. So you just kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at some of that math there. We're gonna start, we're gonna focus right on the center of the block, but we're gonna do all of it together, super fun. What we're gonna need from that three inch strip of the blue, where it was actually started as the three and seven eighths, then I have myself down into a three inch square. I also have some of the two and seven inch, two and seven eighth inch squares. Trying to go too fast, sorry about that. And they're gonna be cut on the diagonal like this. So the way you would do that, if this is your first quilt you've ever made, awesome, welcome to the club. But I'm just gonna go ahead and take my rotary cutter and ruler, laying the ruler on the diagonal across here. Now, of course, you can do multiple squares at once as long as you stack them very accurately. I'm gonna slice through there just like that. And now basically what I'm trying to say is I need four of these triangles that were cut from those two and seven eighth inch strips of the green. Now here's a fun little trick. We're gonna sew these around here like this and like this, 
Okay, that's what it's gonna look like. But sometimes these triangles are a little hard to know where to start because you'll notice that the triangle is actually like a house roof, a little bit larger than the body itself. So here's my trick. This is what I love to do. I'm gonna take my triangles over to my ironing board real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and just press, and I'm pressing the long edge to find a center point. So I'm folding it over side by side like that. And I'm just gonna press, and what that's gonna be, it's gonna be a marker. It's gonna let me know right where I wanna start those. Like this. But the alignment marks will do us no good if we don't do it to the square first. So let's go ahead and do one side of our square, just the same, just like that. And we'll come back and do the other as we're pressing it out. So now that I have my square and my little uh, pressed mark there, I'm gonna go right sides together. I'm gonna lay that pressed line there with the pressed line on the square. Come on over to my sewing machine. And we're just gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance right now. I like to backstitch on all of these parts and pieces today. I'll probably say it over and over again, but that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna sew through one side, backstitch, cut my thread, spin it around, and just line up the other side. We're gonna do two at a time. Matching that up, coming to the machine. Once those two triangles are on the square like this, we're gonna to wanna to press and we're gonna press away from the center of the square. So we're gonna press that green one that way. We're gonna press that green triangle that way. And now that we've done that, we need to figure out where our center alignment marks are. So I'm just gonna bring them over, line them up. Hit myself again in the center, just so I have a quick little crease so I know where to position the next triangles. Next triangles are gonna go on like the first two, just in different spots, of course and right sides together, line up my marker in that center point there. That way my triangles fit perfect. Sometimes my little corners will get in the way, so I love having an edge guide, or excuse me, a stiletto handy against my edge guide there. Side number two. Once those are on, we're gonna take this off. We're gonna once again press away from the center square, pressing those triangles out. And now, just to make sure that everything remains accurate through the rest of the block, let's go ahead and take a second and trim this down to a four and a half inch square. Now, I'm gonna do that by looking at my center line running through in both directions, and I'm gonna come over here to four and a quarter at my tips, and then I'm gonna just push it up so that I can actually, I'm only trimming this one side right now, and there's not much to trim, but once you have the first side trimmed, then it becomes very easy to rotate around. Now you're just gonna find your four and a half inch mark. That would have been a big trim if you're paying attention there. Looking at this edge now, easy to trim. And with quilting, the more accurate you are when you start your blocks, the more accurate they will be when they're finished out. Looking at the bottom, looking at the center on the four and a quarter, trimming, now it's gravy trimming here, and the center of the square is already set, okay? Now what we're gonna do, following the instructions, is we're gonna make some what we call half square triangles, and I've showed you in other videos other ways of doing this, so let's try a new way today. What we wanna do is we wanna mark the wrong sides, and these are gonna be our three inch uh, squares. You're gonna need two blue ones and two green ones. You're gonna flip over one color of fabric, and you're gonna simply draw yourself a line, oops, make sure your fabric doesn't move. This is also our stitch line, so we want it to be accurate. Make sure your line is on the wrong side of the fabric, please, although it will also become a cut line. So if you make one mistake, don't recut a square. It will actually end up in your seam allowance eventually. Okay, now that those are together, I'm just gonna lay a blue and green three inch square, right sides together, just like that. Now as I come over to the sewing machine though, I'm gonna move my edge guide just slightly out of the way. Swing it around. I'm gonna need it again later, and now watch what I'm doing. I'm lining up the outside of my foot along this stitch line here, excuse me, the drawn line, and that's gonna be our guide. 
My foot's a little bit narrower than a quarter inch, which is actually gonna be a bonus in this situation because I'm actually making a little bit larger half square triangles than the recipe calls for, and we will be able to trim those down very easily. Do this to both. Down one side, cut your thread, spin your work, back your stitch, down the other. Okay, and now I'm gonna use a ruler, although I don't have to, mostly to keep my block and my hand safe. So I'm gonna cut down that drawn line a second ago. And now what I'm actually creating for us is four new half square triangles Okay, and what's gonna happen with these is we're gonna to wanna to press them. You've heard the rumor, press to the dark side. I like that idea. So I'm gonna press these over to the greener side on these ones, that's a little darker for me. And as they're pressed, we're gonna also wanna go ahead now and get ready to trim these bad boys down. We're gonna do that by taking the top corner of my ruler happens to have a 45 degree angle on it. That 45 degree angle is gonna lay right along this seam. I'm double checking to make sure I have at least my two and a half, which is this mark way over here. So I'm now gonna trim here and the top by pulling through so that that way I'm not hitting my cutter on the corner. Rotate the block 180 using the same diagonal. And now I can perfectly line up the uh, what would be two and a half inches and the two and a half inches over here and trim off all the excess. I'm gonna take a moment and do that to the rest of them. I will be right back. Okay, and now, like I said, I have four of these perfectly looking patchwork half square triangles with my blue and green fabrics. And those units are gonna end up actually out here as these cornerstones. So we also need to build these units real quick. So to build those, we had our um, rectangles that were the four and a half inch strips of the jet black. Well, I cut them by four and a half down to four and a half by two and a half to form these rectangles. You'll need four of them. And then the same kind of idea, I have eight of these little squares. These are gonna be two and a half inch squares because we're gonna need them to fit onto our uh, two and a half by four and a half. And what they have, all of them, is a diagonal line drawn across there. And that's gonna also be a stitch line, but this time we're gonna sew right on the line. So I'm gonna take a second and I'm gonna really make sure that those outside three edges are lined up with the top fabric and my black rectangle. And then I'm gonna come on over here I'm gonna set my stitch down. I'm actually gonna take a couple stitches in and then back stitch to the corner. And now I'm looking at the actual drawn line as it goes through the stitch foot, right here. And then I'm gonna sew all the way through back stitch here. And actually you can do these chain piece style, but you're only gonna do one side of the rectangle at a time, okay? So you can do here, you can grab the next one. Align that up, get a couple stitches in before you back it up. And the last one on the last side over here. So we're doing four of these total. I'm just using my thread cutter on my machine to kind of cut through these real quick. But what we want to do now, before we even get over to the ironing board, is we're going to trim off our excess. So you just take this little guy here, you're going to give yourself a quarter inch protection, and you're going to cut off both the brown fabric and the black fabric, or the top and bottom layer, however you want to see and or hear that. These pieces will go into the dog bed bin for later. And now I have four of these rectangles with one side, basically what we call snowballed or set up to become flying geese. I'm gonna press all four of these rectangles over now because we need them pressed over before we put on the second side. 
Don't ask me how I learned that a few minutes ago when you weren't looking. So I started over. So I already told you. <laughs> and I got these ironed in the same amount of time. So we got these bad boys pressed over like that. Super easy, super fun. Now I'm gonna come on over and this is what I want you to pay attention to, okay? So I want you to make sure that we're gonna form a peak when we sew these. So as I bring in this next sewing line, I wanna make sure what I'm seeing looks like it's gonna make a little tent or a little peak shape, okay? Then we're gonna come over to the edge here and I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing this out on the outside edge again. Not that it matters where you start, as long as you do a nice back stitch, stay right on your line and come all the way through. I'm gonna finish all four like that trim the other sides and then press those over very simply as well. And now we should have four of these wonderful little units like this. <laughs> Maybe I should turn them all the right way. And we're gonna now go ahead and start to build out the outer border for our center square. So why don't we go ahead first off and make these with our cornerstones added on. And as you can see in our example, the orange and the blue are gonna make that same triangle, that TP shape. So I'm just gonna look at it right here, orange and blue together forming that triangle shape. I'm gonna set two aside for later and I'm gonna set these two up now for the long sides of our outer square. Okay, checking, checking. And the same thing, I can sew on one side, then the other, return over to the ironing station. I wanna set my quarter inch measurement back up because I just really rely on that. I'm gonna take a second, lock that down. And away we go. If you move your blocks, make sure your orange and blue form that triangle again. Form that little tent. And now with these rectangular units, I'd like you to go ahead and press the squares, the cornerstones, away from the center. So you're gonna press each one of these away from the black fabric is probably the easiest way to say it. So we have two of these now long sides. And we have the two of the short sides. The short sides are gonna go on first. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna line up just like this so that the black V goes away from the center marks. And same thing, I can put on two at once if I want. So I'm just gonna line these up, taking a little care for the center point and the both outside edges because everything should have been trimmed down to really be nice and accurate. Again, we're gonna press away from the center, press away from the center block here. Eh, not too shabby. We won't zoom in. <laughs> okay, and then now as I'm adding on my other pieces here, we're gonna drop them in like that. I've got more points to match up, but I also have more seam allowances to use as my alignment point. So it actually is just getting easier and easier. To make a nice little accurate block. Take the time to press it open and enjoy the quality of your work here. And before we go any further and get onto those outside borders, the finishing for all of the squares, let's just talk about a couple of things. Maybe you're the kind of person like myself and you can't wait till next month for the second block and you wanna just make this quilt as just these squares. Well, look at what happens if you don't add the extra. It's gonna be super cool, obviously. It's gonna to start to form all of these other colors and all of these other, um, basically, stars that will form in and out of each other, which is really entertaining 
and awesome as well. These are roughly eight inch squares right now. The finished block and the quilts are 16 finished, 16 and a half raw. So let's get that going on. Okay, so you're gonna need one of your centers. And earlier I mentioned we had that eight and a half inch wide strip of the black. Well, with that eight and a half inch wide strip of the black, we're gonna need to make four more rectangles that are eight and a half inches by four and a half inches. You're gonna need to make two squares of a new fabric, that neutral fabric from the outside, that are gonna be four and a half inch squares. And you're also gonna need two black four and a half inch squares. So all of this here, and I'm sorry, you're gonna need four of these, you're gonna need uh, eight of these, and four of these total for the outside of one individual block. So we're gonna do like we just did with these smaller units here. We're going to go ahead and draw on the back side the diagonal lines. We're gonna go ahead and just line this up over here. Once again, easier without the edge guide for this style sewing. Back stitching. And just following my drawn line really nice. Come on down. And just like with the smaller versions, I'd like you to go ahead and trim with a quarter inch to protect your hand and your block work. And press. Pressing into the triangle away from your rectangle. Okay, and the same thing. We're gonna make sure it forms a point so this line out to that line is gonna form my point, lining up my three edges. Coming on over to the machine again. In the same situation as before, we're gonna trim. We're gonna press. And you should end up with four of these made up, right? So you're gonna have multiples of these made up, four total, but we are going to make this eventually by simply adding on now the four and a half inch squares to either side. So you're gonna have two that are like this and you're gonna have two that don't have the squares just like before. I'm hoping it's all making good, pretty good sense at this point. So let's get these on real quick so we can finish out our block. All the rest of the sewing will have the quarter inch seam guide on for me. And same situation, I wanna press away from the center, give myself some nice seam allowance management on the uh, squares as they're all coming back together. And then we're gonna start by putting on our short sides onto our block. So let's see, this time let's sew them onto the, the long sides of the last one. And does that look right to you? It does to me, okay. Of course I double checked over there on the quilt real quick because I panicked. Now, line that up, come on over to the machine. Slow and steady. We're gonna press these away from center also. And now we're gonna go ahead and insert our last pieces. Just make sure that as you're getting excited that you have uh, be forming the star, that you're making sure your blue um, triangles are facing the right direction, just like before. Line up your seam allowances. You have more seam allowances to align, so that actually makes it more accurate and easier.
Oh yes, and the final thread cut of our awesome block. I hope you've had as much fun doing this as I have. I really like this patchwork. And of course, you know I had to get in on some of that awesome action of the peak into boutique so long, the block of the month. I hope you will join in the fun. Here's my finished 16 and a half inch raw, 16 inch square. We can do all kinds of great things with just this, or like I said, hang out with us all year long, so along, block after block. Enjoy our fabulous brand ambassadors out there. And I will see you again very soon, Wednesday or before, right here at Making It Fun. Adios, amigos. I'm glad to see you're still there. Hey, if you insist on spending all day on YouTube, great with me. Please check out a few of my other videos. I think they're fantastic. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time for another Helping of Fun.